I have been here. The Grey Goose. Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. Having participated in an adventure with Inspector Ben Ford on behalf of Scotland Yard and the security blokes, I began to bask in the sun of my own virtue. And quite suddenly, I woke up from this complacency to wonder a little whether the grey goose had slipped somewhere. With this idea in mind, I wasn't too comfortable when my warning buzzer went, and then the chimes at my front door. I opened the door to confront Chief Inspector Ben Ford himself. Can I come in, Fletcher? Oh, I see you're all dressed up. Going somewhere? Yes, Mrs. Dean Wall's crush at Berkeley Square. You know, Ben, these calls from a prominent Scotland Yard official give a sort of a cachet to my humble flat. Everybody says that man Fletcher's a big noise. Even Scotland Yard calls on him for advice. Commissioners, chief inspectors, MI5, foreign officials... All and... right, all right, all right. My hat, I wish I had your sense of humour. <laughs> but you have, Ben. You'd be surprised how many times you've handed me a good laugh. Strange you should say that. Strange? Why? Well, um, sometimes I've wondered whether you were pulling my leg. My dear Ben, uh, Inspector, have a drink. You're not quite yourself. <laughs> Surely you can't mean that. I do? No, I won't have a drink. I'm on duty for one thing. What duty? Lady Formerly's jewels. Jewels? Yes, Lady Formerly's jewels. They were stolen last night, £8,000 worth. Were you at Lady F's place? I hate to admit it, but I was. Then perhaps you can tell me some of the details. Unfortunately, although I was among those present, I didn't hear much of the ruckus. Left early. Oh, bored to tears. Oh, dreadful show, I believe. However, let me get back to where I intended to start. And where was that? Well, we recently had a little experience together at a place called Crane Crescent. Only too true. Oh, my bones ache at the recollection. So do mine. <laughs> but a thought has entered my mind. The Grey Goose insinuated himself into that adventure. Much to our mutual benefit, Ben. Oh, definitely. But how did he know things that only you and I knew? How the deuce could he know that that awful character, our pescu, had nailed you and me to a wall? How did he open a safe and leave one of his confounded feathers inside? Echo answers? How? Exactly. Fletcher, when that croaking voice rang me up last, he said he knew you very well. Did he really? Yes. But he also said you'd not be able to point him out. Yes, that's the whole point, Ben. This grey goose chappy knows me, he knows you. In fact, he knows a lot of people we know. Our trouble is we don't know him. Uh, the grey goose may be a man we even meet at our club. A man we rub shoulders with anywhere and everywhere. Why? He could be you. Uh, what? I said he might even be you. I apparently heard you the first time. But why make such a shattering statement? Don't let my ideas scare you. I say, and I think time will show, that our friend the Grey Goose is someone we know. Now, suppose it or he were you. Don't say things like that twice. Could you, as an ordinary citizen, account for all and every hour of your time? What are you driving at? Well, to put it in a nutshell, every time the Grey Goose was active, what were you doing? Good gracious. I get you, Ben. Huh. Couldn't produce an alibi for a thousand pounds. Exactly. So you could be the Grey Goose. Uh, uh, yes. But wait on, Ben. When the Grey Goose was active, I think you said. Yes. What were you doing? And incidentally, where were you? Uh, don't answer that question. Yes, yes, I see what you're getting at. Yes. Well, I'm going to make a check-up of all the young blokes you and I know who might allow adventure and a certain amount of unscrupulousness to walk hand in hand. Oh. How sweet, Ben. I like that hand-in-hand -hand touch. Oh, shut up. You know what I mean. Definitely. All right. Consider yourself warned. And you can tell any of the others who goslings up to date might aspire to become grey geese. All right? I'll see you later. Here. Well, I'm dashed. What's Ben driving at? Surely I haven't dropped a brick anywhere recently? Hmm... I'd better get rid of those formerly jewels, though. I think a little consultation with Barbara might help matters at this juncture. 
You in, Barbara? Yes. Well, work the old bookcase and come in. What's on, Rody? You sounded a little put out. Well, no, not a bit. But old Ben Ford has stuck his nose out a good deal lately and is, I believe, slightly on the scent. Somehow I've got to put him off before that same nose leads him direct to me. Is he as close as that? No, no, I, I don't think so. In fact, I'm certain he's not. But he's as wily as a fox is our Ben. Now, we've got those formerly jewels here. And just in case of accidents, I'm going to get rid of them at once. All right. How do you set about it? I thought of a way. You shall dress up again, a double for me, wear the very natty dress suit and all the trimmings. <laughs> Don't forget to put on the moustache. I've never forgotten any of the details so far. Good girl. Now, here's an invitation to Mrs. Dean Wall's do in Berkeley Square, a huge mausoleum of place, hundreds of dithering dudes and desperate damsels. Oh, with whom do I dance? A dude or a damsel? <laughs> you don't <laughs> dance with anyone. You present your card, walk through the rooms, turn round, come out, get into your car, then drive back here. Not to your entrance, but to this flat, mine. Take off your top hat, throw it across the room, help yourself to a whiskey, and smoke one of my cigars. Good heavens. Sorry, but yes. In fact, you make anyone who's on the lookout think I've been and gone and returned. Meantime, you're somewhere else. Exactly. I go into your flat when you're ready to come here, and I go out of your door at the back, dressed as our old friend, Mr. Jenkins. Can I ask where you're going? You can and may. I'm taking the um, doings to Charlie Austin. But he's no fence. Well, certainly he isn't. But he'll find a good hiding place for them temporarily. Mind you, I think you're going to an awful lot of trouble. Ben Ford may think suspicious thoughts, but he's got nothing to go on, surely. Well, I hope you're right. But just come over to the window. Mm -hmm. On your knees. That's it. Now, just one eye in the corner and gaze down onto the street. What am I supposed to see? You're not supposed to see anything unusual. At the same time, there is something unusual there, in the doorway opposite. A man? Yes. A flatfoot, my dear. A cop. Watching for you? Yes, like an anxious mother, waiting for her firstborn to return from school after his first day. Now I'm beginning to see. Good. When you change, you come in here. Shortly after, you go down the lift, get into my car, drive round to this crush, and carry on as we arranged. I do see the idea. It's my bet our little friend opposite will follow you. That's his little rattle trap down the street. And keep glued to you till you return. You see, I told Ben I was going to Mrs. Deanwell's, so he would just like to know that I did go. Now, hop off and change, then buzz me when you're ready. I'll then nick out through your place. Right. See you soon. <laughs> Shops closed. Oh, bad luck. Charlie, it's Mr. X. Blimey. Hold on a moment. All right, good evening. Up. Yeah, Here, what's the game? You wait, Mr. Hex. Who are you? Up it now for a dongs, you one. <laughs> it really is me, Charlie. Just a bit of touching up here and there. Oh, well, now, of course, I knows the voice. <laughs> I can tell it's you. Here, here, come inside. Well, you could knock me down with a feather and no mistake. I'm glad it's so good. The fact is, I'm Mr. H.C. Jenkins, now travelling abroad. He had the flat back of mine, and while he's away, I leased it to Miss Favisham. And, of course, you know the bookcase trick. Didn't I fix up the patent lock for you? <laughs> now, what can I do for you, eh? Uh, just put these in a safe place, if you will. Holy mackerel sparklers! Mr. Hex, I, I can't take them. Well, of course you can't. But you can show me a hideout for them. Yeah, I reckon I can. <laughs> yeah, put them away before they blinds me and leads me into temptation. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Hex Jenkins, sharps the wood. There's an old junkyard back of here, see? I've got the safest case for them you ever did see. Just follow me. Uh, mind your step. You are sure the bloke who owns all this junk mightn't come across your hiding place sometime when he's cleaning up a bit? Of course he could. But it won't matter. Well, who is he? <laughs> Me. <laughs> oh, now stoop down here. Yeah. Now, just here is a little wall safe, see? <laughs> Me own invention. <laughs> there you are. Now, in with them. Ah, good. <coughs> now, you'd better vamoose. Yes, I think I will, too. Out the back way, through that there gate into the alleyway. Right. 
See you again soon. OK. Let me know when you want the sparklers. Yes? You're still in my flat, then? Of course. I'm doing my act, parading up and down past the window. I've even got my dress coat and vest off. Well, don't overdo it for the sake of a mere flat foot. You coming back here? Uh, no, not yet. You come through to, to your flat. Let the catch of the bookcase go on your side. Well, I'm glad you're back. I don't think I like smoking cigars much. Well, dash into your bedroom now and get into feminine clothes too to sweet. And tell me how things went. Good. I'll be very glad to. Well, as you said, our friend followed me all the way. Even parked his little buggy tail on to the Daimler. Impertinence. Well, I presented my card, uh, your card at the door. Strolled through the throng, got me a drink at the bar. Coughed into my handkerchief every time anyone looked like speaking to me. Then beat a fairly strategical retreat back to the car. Gave the doorman ten bob of your money and got back here. Followed by our friend who's still with us. Excellent. Now you can go and tell Ben I was never out of his sight for a moment. Well, how do I look now? <laughs> Better than in a dress suit, but... Who's there? Ben Ford, Miss Faberton. I have a word with you. Oh. Ford. Just a minute, Inspector. I, uh, I was just going to bed. Uh, give me a chance to put something on. I'll trot back to my place. Switch on your microphone. Right. Uh, coming, Inspector. did suggest that Roland Fletcher had overplayed his hand. This may prove a tough problem for Fletcher, so listen to the further development of this adventure of The Grey Goose.